Senator, it's, it's great to be with you. Um, you're such an environmental champion. You've been so strong throughout your tenure as a state senator and working on environmental protection. So on this 50th anniversary of Earth Day, when the world is in a, facing a pandemic from the coronavirus, um, it's great to be with you to talk with you today. But I'm really just sort of curious if you want to just share with you, you know, your history and involvement in Earth Day and what Earth Day means to you both you know, as, a, as an elected official, but also equally important as a, as, a, as a person and as a dad. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for having me. And thanks for um, all the uh, amazing work that EA does in Albany, the gold standard for uh, so many uh, environmental groups. Uh, so I, I really appreciate what you've done in this last session and, and sessions to come uh, in particular. Um, you know, for me, uh, Earth Day means the, the, best of, the best of activism uh, because 50 years ago, um, you know, there wasn't really the concept uh, that you could change government's approach toward the environment until um, people organized and were inspired by people like Rachel Carson and, and other great thinkers and took to the halls of Congress and state legislatures like New York and advocated for change to protect our environment. And for me, as a state legislator, that is one of my foremost responsibilities, which is to make this planet a better place for my children and future generations of New Yorkers. And that sums up uh, for me and I think for many of my colleagues, uh, what Earth Day is about, uh, the noble promise of bettering our environment, but the awesome responsibility to do so here uh, in New York uh, and in the State House of Albany. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing that with me. Uh, and thanks for your kind words about the organization. Um, so just a, a quick follow up then. So as we're looking at this Earth Day and future Earth Days, um, what do you think are sort of like the key things that New York and New Yorkers should be doing to ensure that you know, I think in this moment of time, the nation really needs us to be that true environmental leader um, and is going to need us even more going forward. So what are the sort of the key things that New York and individuals in New York should be doing to advance environmental protection so that that state can be the true environmental leader that the nation needs of it right now? I think you see uh, in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic, uh, one of the principles at play that was part of the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act that uh, really transcending uh, climate bill that was passed last year with EA's uh, leadership. Uh, and that is the impact on uh, low income and minority communities. Uh, COVID-19 is ravaging them now, just like climate change has ravaged them for the last uh, 100 plus years. So we need to reorient our, our focus and continue to um, assist uh, low-income communities uh, to have the ability to head off climate change, just, just as we're trying to do um, in the nascent stages of protecting them against uh, COVID-19. Um, these kinds of communities are uh, often the victims of uh, chronic air pollution, um, which research has shown that is linked to worse COVID-19 health outcomes. And so I'm, I'm really proud that we passed the CLCPA with those New Yorkers in mind. Um, I'm proud that we have you know, fully implemented the uh, Diesel Admissions Reduction Act. Um, and have taken other steps to, to clean our air. We have to continue to um, incentivize renewable energy, uh, improve air and water quality, um, and invest in these communities, those that have been most victimized by pollution and are vulnerable to climate change. 